young enough that he holds my age against me. They're not so young that he feels guilty holding my hands behind my back or holding me against him while he moans. Just young enough that he looks at me in red lit, red wine soaked post coital glow and says, I didn't think at my age I'd be dating a 24 year old. He didn't ask me to stay, he just said that I could, and I'm old enough to know the difference. All these men, they ask me where I grew up, and I say, Boston. I don't tell them in October on the steps of the church down the street where I would always wander, met others, made friends with the characters on break from the AA meeting, smoked too many cigarettes, rebelled, broke hearts, left love notes taped to the door, left my first lover. It was a church I never entered. I grew up in October when she told me it was cancer. When I collapsed on the steps, banged my fists on the door and made a heaving, stuttered attempt at prayer and asked him why he'd let me save her so many times before. And I've lived more than 24, but when he asks me where, I just say Boston. I don't tell him at 8 Hollygate Circle at 8 years old on our kitchen floor, my mother lay there. This was the first time that he let me keep her. She slipped away in time with her plummeting blood sugar, danced towards white like diabetic coma. I was eight years old, digging through her purse the way I used to dig through dirt in search of an emergency injection, tapping air out of the syringe and injecting it in between the freckles on her skin, clutching our telephone and untangling the cord enough that I could touch her while I called for an ambulance. And when he asked me my address, I just said, Boston. I didn't tell him at 11 in the arts and crafts cabin, coughing on salt that he'd forced down my throat, left, left scratch need girl over seasoned with guilt and the bitter taste that it left when he told it was worse. For years, this was the story I could never write, but by 17, I healed. I told my mother, who in turn revealed what had been done to him. You see, I grew up in a small town 45 minutes away from the city with the largest case of sexual abuse in Massachusetts history. I grew up with boys who learned to love this way, but when men ask me where I grew up, I just say, Boston. I don't tell them on the steps of soccer corps, standing out of breath and just out of breathless, 19 practically penniless, wandering alone in Paris. I grew up laughing too hard. I grew up in his arms. I grew up... <laughs> um, I grew up on the day she died and months later when I realized the difference between dead and gone standing on a bridge in Amsterdam the first time I realized I was in love standing in his kitchen drinking orange juice the afternoon after the first time I grew up standing in the hallway of the hospital, waving my grandfather's advance directive at the doctors, insisting that despite my age, he had trusted me to speak for him, to recite the poem of his health care proxy, not to let him live this way. I grew up on the day that I let him die. I grew up dreaming, breathing New York, waiting for the right moment, learning from my mistakes and sewing up wounds. I grew up in Boston, writing poems about men like you. Wow. wow. My grandfathers are gone now, so I have adopted one. Aww. New York does this. It gives, takes, makes promises it can't keep, drives you mad with grief, longing, and winter, and if you can make it, it will give a little more. It's funny, he doesn't know it, but he carries on the same sentiment, same complaints, berates me for my low self-esteem and gets me to write, sees past all this pale skin of mine and listens, reminds me that my heart still beats, sometimes. Pa was hard to talk to, like running up a steep hill, like running out of time. His heart so broken that he forgot that mine was built from the same faulty parts. He didn't understand why I left Adam, and the conversation became an argument over how my grandmother left him, and he'd stop when I started crying. He couldn't fix this emotion, but he could call his clock repairman. He noticed my hands weren't moving in sync. I was just popped springs, broken gears. His broken, his rusted granddaughter clock spent three years collecting dust and being wound up in the wrong ways. Three years ticking around the same day. I tried to tell him he was the only guy that I had any time for, and he said he would gladly be miserable if it meant love for me. 
In his own way, he believed in love, the socio-economic benefits of cohabitation and making my genetic contribution to the population. He didn't believe in marriage since divorce is both inevitable and expensive. But he believed I was a girl worth loving which is a significant something coming from him, a soldier with a rib cage that rattled shrapnel bits from the blonde bombshell that hit him and left. My adopted grandfather seems to have picked up where Pa left off. He says, so are you seeing someone? You seem to be writing all these love poems. And I don't know if love is the word or seeing. I have words for each of them, the sweet one and the other one. He understands. So I told him of the other one, how he comes and goes and disappears, how I lose interest and we are just two wanderers, then out of nowhere he shows back up and surprises me, but I just don't know. Set the bar extremely low and like any grandfather should, he says, it sounds like it isn't going anywhere. So I say, give it time. And I felt my hands start ticking again.